Hey YouTube, we've got a 2007 Toyota Prius with the TPMS light on. I haven't really seen a video that uh, takes you all the way through the process. Uh, so here's an attempt to try to uh, do <laughs> everything in a single uh, video. It's probably not going to be as detailed because there are other videos that does certain things. But just basically trying to show the flow. Uh, first time I'm working on tires, so uh, it may not uh, be successful, but then I guess you could just laugh. Okay. So here you can see that the TPMS light is flashing and uh, after a while I think it stops flashing. Uh, it will go solid. With the Prius there is a TPMS reset light, a uh, reset button. Um, let's see, where is my finger? Here we go. So basically that's a button that you push in order to reset uh, the TPMS that uh, may have become inactive. Not really sure how, what the mechanism is or if you do it uh, when you after you feel the tire but it is under the steering column but pushing that on this car doesn't do anything so basically something's wrong with the TPMS the Maxi TPMS TS408 this is the cheapest um, Maxi TPMS system um, this can only clone the uh, TPMS sensor so as I understand it, there's two general ways to uh, sort of mate or pair the TPMS sensor with the car. One is to clone the TPMS sensor itself so uh, it looks like the old sensor that was replaced. And the other is to just put in any TPMS sensor and make the car learn that there is a new TPMS sensor in. Um, in this situation, the cheap TPMS, uh, cheap Maxi TPMS, it only allows you to clone the sensor, which so we'll be programming the sensor to pretend it is the same as the old sensor. Okay, it is uh, unusually windy today. I'm sorry for all the wind noise. Um, and also, you know, with regards to the TPMS, I think the price has come down. If you go to a discount auto store or something like that, a friend of mine just said he had the Toyota RAV4. TPMS, all four of them replaced for 240 I think he said, 60 bucks a piece. So uh, if this is just occasional, it's probably just easier to take it to a tire repair shop now. Um, in our my situation, we have a we have like four vehicles, so uh, uh, replacing this could uh, or taking it to the tire shop could actually end up costing a lot. So basically, I got the Maxi TPS, the Altel. TPS. This is the four TS four eight series. This is the cheapest one. So this is the one that cannot talk to the OBD two. So basically, it is just a reset of the the TPMS module. So once you turn it on, and it's kind of hard to see, you go into this TPMS mode, and you have to choose the vehicle the ST Toyota. And it's a Prius. And it is a 2007. So it is the 2006 to the 2012 model. And I say scan all sensors. And basically it says start with your uh, left front tire. So basically take it into the left front. Do I need to push anything? Press the middle key. And huh, it says it's low at, yeah, we'll <laughs> do this later here. Now we're looking at the right front. Did it register? Okay. And right rear. <laughs> and the left rear. I'm going to the shade here. So basically this is telling me that the tire pressure is low on three sensors. 
um, which is a little disappointing because when I looked at it a few days ago it was only the two rear tires but now I have another sensor up front um, kind of regretting not just taking it to a tire shop uh, because doing three is a lot of work but anyways here we go so here's the scan result basically um, the left front left rear and the right rear are all showing low battery so this is a 2007 vehicle it's 2020 so 13 years old bought it used don't know if it's ever been replaced um, but basically, here you go. So, let's see. I didn't bother t testing the spare tire. Maybe I should have. But, so this basically shows the status of the um, the tire. So, the, 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 the low one has to be replaced. And considering the work required to break the bead of the tire and all that kind of thing, I am a little bit regretting um, trying to do this myself. And probably should have taken it to a discount tire place but in any case uh, so basically now becomes a point of uh, replacing uh, finding a replacement sensor um, there seems to be a lot of different kinds of sensors where you can't program uh, the sensor itself but you have to program the OBD2 or the, the computer in the car uh, the maxi TPS I have the 4 or 8 cannot program the car right it just can't it just it programs the sensor so basically, they also, the Altel actually sells an MX sensor, which works with this device and is supposed to be compatible with 98% of the vehicle. So basically, I bought two of them because um, I thought the two rears were what I had to replace. So let's see. Uh, the By the way, this is like 156 bucks on Amazon, and this is like 32 bucks on Amazon. There's only two types, one with the uh, sort of the metal shaft, and one with the uh, rubber shaft. Uh, it's compatible with both frequencies, so this should work for almost anything. Uh, it comes uh, with a sort of a, a stem and uh, the, the base part. So basically it looks, <laughs> there's no instruction, absolutely. So basically it looks like you have to uh, use a hex key, Allen, Allen, head, uh, Allen wrench in order to screw the shaft onto the device. So basically you have to uh, use this four millimeter uh, Allen wrench to screw this unit into the shaft um, and let's see the seal is on the inside of the wheel and this goes on the outside of the wheel they mentioned there should be a washer but there was no washer included and it's moving forward put it in here and let's see Let's see if this works. Program sensor, yes. Copy by activation, yes. And we are talking about the right rear sensor. Okay, looks like it was programmed. Please install a point sensor to the corresponding left rear sensor. Oops, I meant to do right rear, huh? Yeah, anyways, it's the left rear sensor now. Okay, so this is uh, trying to show you uh, how to actually replace the tire pressure monitoring system in the tire. So this is a tire. Um, the, it has a dead uh, tire pressure monitoring system uh, in there. Um, not dead, but it's enough to put the light on. So basically, uh, I'll be replacing it with the Altel uh, replacement unit. So I just got to the point where I took the tire off the um, vehicle. And let's see. Prius has a trim ring. Let's see. Yeah, just keep it together. And the first thing you need to do is you need to let the air out of the tire. Making sure. Yeah, there you go. And the easiest way to do it is to remove the valve stem. 
So here's a valve stem removal tool. Basically, it sort of has a slot that ties with the valve stem. And as you So this thing goes in here and it turns. The Deed Buster XP XD, as in board, 452. For the Prius, I'm using the short arm. Uh, this part. I think I see. goes in under the rim and you need to make sure that this is flushed up against the rim if, if it's not in all the way the bead won't break it may take a few try to get it right and of course with the impact you gotta make sure you don't want to uh, bend the rim or ruin the rim or something. So basically the, the U part, the part right here, right, for the B buster has to be right up against the rim. Otherwise, you're not close enough to the end of the tire to break the bead. All right, just for good measure. So this is my soapy water. So it has water and detergent. Not sure if this really makes a difference when you're taking the tire off, but yeah, this lubrication make, meant to make things easier. So now I go in and basically this pushes down. And the bead is broken here. You need to make sure that you don't do anything damaging to the um, tire pressure monitoring system down there. All right, so I see it right there. And you, you do want to break the rim, break the bead all the way along. So I'm going through this relatively speedily. It's only because this is the third time I'm doing it. So you should see me the, the first two times. And one thing I do want to make sure is this is the tire pressure, this is the valve stem, and then it is the tire pressure monitoring system attached to it. It's only held by this nut or that shaft or shaft nut or whatever it's called. Um, holding the tire pressure monitoring system in place you do not want to do, want to drop the tire pressure monitor in there. Uh, you'll have to fish it out with some kind of grab tool or something like that. There, there's no way you can get your finger in there to grab it or anything like that. Um, so, in case that happens, what I do is you need another tire. Yeah, you don't have to have it. I don't think. But it's much easier to do to have a tire iron so you can kind of stick the duct tape onto the tire pressure monitoring system. Right. So <laughs> even if it drops, maybe you'll still be able to pull it up with the tape. The next thing you have to do is with the Prius, the valve stem is a 12 millimeter, maybe not 12. Yeah, 12. So basically, 
I don't have a deep socket for something this small. Actually, maybe I do, but I'm too lazy to get it now. So basically, you take this off and put it all in one corner. And what I do is fishing wire, right? Which makes it a lot easier to drop this um, valve down and still be able to somewhat not lose it. So basically I have this thin wire that I wrap around the thread of the valve and then I electrical tape it. Electrical tape because it's stretches and provides a fairly secure bond and when I do electrical work and I'm fishing things I of course use electrical tape so it seems like it's a natural tape to use for this kind of situation and there's a washer in there so anyways so it is in so now I could just drop this tire pressure monitoring system and doing that I need space so I'm gonna kind of grab the tire bring it out hopefully I don't have too much electrical tape here you see it drop and with the duct tape basically I could fish it out right easy peasy mind you the first time I did this um, well, actually, the real first time I did this, I didn't have this. I had a piece of wood where somebody was showing it, and I was driving up another car and uh, spent like three hours doing something and didn't get anywhere. The first time I dropped that thing, <laughs> it took about an hour of fishing to get it out. And uh, let's see, I just did another recording, actually. Uh, for the second wheel that I done it went relatively smoothly, but I wasn't prepared. So it, it kind of looks really awkward uh, So I decided to just uh, uh, Shoot it uh, now that I have everything that I need around me so I don't have to go look for it Ouch So this is the Toyota genuine tire pressure monitoring system and this is the Altel one so basically I'll be replacing this. I've already programmed the Altel one to clone um, clone the uh, previous one. Uh, the 408 that I have does not um, is not capable of programming the OBD2 or the, the car side. Basically what it does is it mimics the sensor to pretend like the sensor hasn't changed. So with that, let's see. So now I gotta put the fishing component on this side. So wrap the wire a few times around the thread. Wrap it with electrical tape. So it won't come off too easily. And my final trick. Duct tape. So what I do with the duct tape is I double up. So this is sort of my grab handle. And then this part gets kind of slathered on here so I could grab it, take a hold of it. Now I have to drop it in here. In order to drop it in, I have to expand the tire and make sure that the direction is correct. Yeah, the tape's sticking on itself. Below the rim. So now I'm pulling on the fishing thing. Yeah. Well, I 
that I'm going through. Here you go. So we went through. And then I have to somehow get this electrical tape off. And there was a washer on the um, the OEM, the Toyota's thing, so I'm gonna put it back on. Here is the shaft thread. So now the thread is in, so I'm in safe zone. So I mean, it's not gonna drop off anymore, drop in the tires anymore. Get rid of, if I could get to it, that is. Get rid of this duct tape. Make sure that the TPMS is not contacting the wheel. So basically the only part, um, ouch. The only part that the sensor is touching is really the, the shaft part. Right? The body of that um, sensor is not lying, against, lying down against the wheel or anything. Oh, this is such a horrible angle. So my hand is in there trying to hold the um, monitoring system in place. So as I spin it, the body of the TPMS doesn't spin. It actually has already. Kind of pulling it out. Checking the gap. Let's see if I can push it out a little, little bit. So there's a little bit more gap on this side. That should be tight enough. Let's see, check for the gaps. Okay. So it's in. Alright. Ouch. That's noisy. And another application of my soapy water. This is just water and detergent mixed in a bottle. And I'll take this thing out. Oh, sorry, that's right, right? And the cap there and the valve is in there. Okay. Ah! Ah! Right. So this comes up. People might say it's easier to put the air in with the valve stem out, but with this one, unless there's a valve stem in there, I can't put air in it. So, 
So you'll hear a large bang sound, and that is when the bead, bead of the tire has seat, seat itself. So what is a bead? So if you look at the tire, basically there's a wide part, I mean the, the rim, there's a wide part of the rim, and there's a narrow part of the rim, sort of a waist, right? So the waist is there, so um, you could get the bead into the waist, the narrow part, in order to take the tire off. So what you're trying to do is basically seat the bead of this, this tire. Bead is a, a, the hole or the, I don't know, the lip of the tire uh, to the wide part of the rim. And when that happens, it will usually be accompanied with a bang. There's that bang. And I'm assuming it's about 15 psi. Yeah, maybe 10. Yeah, 35. Yeah. Compressors off. So checking for air leaks. I'm basically using the soapy water again. Going around the edge. And making sure that there is no bubbles coming out. Focus a lot on the valve stem area okay no valves I mean uh, no uh, bubbles the tire over And no bubbles. So I am done. Okay. I made it look easy. <laughs> it's not it's not this easy the first time you do it. Trust me on that. So back in the video, this is the TPMS light. I can't see it. <laughs> right there. So it's still blinking. Let's see. So the question is, how do you turn it on? This thing is that reset the switch, but I'm just gonna drive it around the block to see if that will turn it off or not. So the switch did not reset itself. I mean the, so pushing the reset button here. Now it is flashing. So a little bit of postscript on the TPMS thing. Uh, when I started, I, oh yeah, I originally, you know, read on the internet that they took people took their car into a tire shop or something like that. They charged them like hundred bucks for a wheel, and then it didn't reset. So they said they had to take it to a dealer. The dealer says two hundred bucks or something. So like three hundred bucks per wheel or or something uh is what was purported on the web so i said hey i got three vehicles that has tpms uh, over time it's probably uh, gonna be cheaper for me to do it myself so basically went out and bought this tpms sensor which i think was about 160 bucks right and the sensor itself that you have to buy this is an extra one that i have to do the other wheels uh, about 30 bucks so 160 190 and ultimately I couldn't get the tire off the uh, rim so I had to buy the bead buster bead buster XP 452 and this was like 160 bucks so what 160 30 190 200 oop I can't do math 160 100 320 350 350 bucks 
right so it ended up being a lot more expensive than i thought it was going to because i didn't think i was going to need this um and i was talking to my friend about this ordeal um it, 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 <laughs> i don't if you haven't really worked on cars uh don't do this it's it's uh it's a little tricky but then i spoke to my friend he said yeah his tire pressure sensor went off and you know he took it to a tire store and they said 60 bucks a wheel so he had all four done for 240 dollars which is less than the 300 something that i spent and all the labor that i put in so i would say you know it, it is uh now now that <laughs> i know that they do it for like 60 bucks a wheel um i will probably just go to a tire store uh i wish i'd known that before i did this and uh if i did go i'll probably just have all four done because you could see that on um, you know the the second one is starting to uh <laughs> come on and of course I, I i intended to do all four but uh it is a lot of work so i probably will only do it as the light comes back on okay anyways that's it thank you